All right, I found a video today of a girl on TikTok that was speaking at her father's funeral and said some of the most unbelievable things that you could ever say about your own dad. And the reason is going to shock you. Don't go away. My goodness, ladies and gentlemen, th this video is unbelievable. You don't want to miss this. I want to go to the Bible before I do so, and this is some of the, the characteristics of the end times people. It's amazing how the Bible had it so right for so long, and we're just trying to catch up to the Word of God. The Bible says here, uh, this know also in the last days perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, and unthankful and unholy. And then also says here, without natural affection. Now, we could probably put all three of these here into the idea of our relationship with parents and things like that. Disobedient to parents, and they're unthankful. Your mom and dad did things for you. You don't even care. Um, unholy is stuck right in the middle of that, and I think that's part of the reason why they're that way. And then without natural affection. Now, this is a video from a, uh, a very famous Twitter account called Libs of TikTok, and these people just expose all the crazy things that people are saying. And I want you to take a moment with me and listen to this obviously woke human being. You can see by the hair right there. Um, speaking at her father's funeral and what she has to say about her own dad. Like the, there's degeneracy and then there's this. So take a time and watch this with me for just a moment. And highly aware of all that you give given this family, I still don't miss you. When you died, I felt like there was a hole. I missed something, but it wasn't you. It was the idea of what you could become. I miss being able to hope and wish that one day you turn a corner and see the world from my perspective. Oh my. I miss the idea that one day you might help me fight for the things that matter. I missed my fantasy of you. Because when you died, it solidified the fact that you'll never be what you could have been, but only what you are. Oh my. And what you are is a racist, misogynistic, xenophobic, Trump-loving, cis-straight white man. That is all you will ever be to me. And dad, before you tell me to respect the dead, please remember that you disrespected and disregarded the lives and deaths of entire communities of people with your ideology. You told me to never back down, so I won't. You know for a fact that even against you, I'm not afraid to share my peace. You are everything I aspire not to be, and I refuse to stand up here and sing the praises of a man who is the paradigm of white supremacy. So I'll take your racist mindset, I'll take your money, and I'll take your advice. And I swear to God I will make this world a better place. Not at all because of you but in exact opposition to you. And then she walks away and people clap. Just what the things that she said, you're, you're a cis, straight, Trump-loving, racist, xenophobic white man, or, or whatever she said about, about his race. I don't know if he's white. But when you died, I felt like there was a hole. Oh, my. I missed something, but it wasn't you. It was the idea of what you could become. I miss being able to hope and wish that one day you turn a corner and see the world from my perspective. I miss the idea that one day you might help me fight for the things that matter. I miss my fantasy of you. Because when you died, it solidified the fact that you'll never be what you could have been, but oh. only what you are. This is the most cringe funeral thing I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen a lot of cringe funerals, but this is, this is the worst, most hard-hearted human being I've ever seen. Okay. Like I can get having daddy issues and I can, I can get people that were abused, toxic families and stuff. But what she's saying is that your daddy voted for Donald Trump. Um, and so now you're going to disparage him publicly and openly at his own funeral because of a political issue. That's, that is a level of hard heartedness and just downright meanness. That is, whoa. I mean, this is like a Noah get the boat moment. This is, <laughs> oh, wow, let's let her talk some more. And what you are is a racist, misogynistic, xenophobic, Trump-loving, cis-straight white man. That is all you will ever be to me. And dad, before you tell me to respect the dead, please remember that you disrespected and disregarded the lives and deaths of entire communities of people with your ideology. You told me to never back down, so I won't. You oh. know for a fact that even against you, I'm not afraid to share my peace. You are everything I aspire not to be, and I refuse to stand up here and sing the praises of a man who is the paradigm of white supremacy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Now, here, here's the problem that everybody's got to get. This is not a political issue. 
this girl does is is not she's woke of obviously you can look at her hair and what she's saying and kind of put two and two together she obviously is a far leftist person but this is not a political problem this is a spiritual problem and the the hard-heartedness of this statement and the reason behind why she said what she said is appalling and wicked that's exactly what this is. Let me show you this with the Bible. Uh, unthankful, disobedient parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Listen, if you got daddy issues, you know, a lot of people do. There have been some terrible things done to children over the past decades and whatever. But, you know, you can at least be decent at a funeral. I mean, come on. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good. And, um, you know, this whole, I think this whole ideology here in these four verses, five verses of 2 Timothy chapter 3 describe the woke movement very accurately. I think they do. These people are just eat up and consumed with sin. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you this just for you, uh, you maybe younger folks who might watch this this video later. Uh, the Bible talks about you know honoring your parents' first commandment with promise here in the book of Ephesians, if I can find that, and uh, I, I believe it to be uh, yeah that you should honor your father. There it is, Ephesians six two. Children obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Okay, you don't obey your parents because your parents are always right, because your parents are not always right, but you obey your parents because it's right in the Lord. It's right according to God. Uh, Honor thy father and mother, uh, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. So I think that there's a there's a promise in the Word of God that if you honor your parents, uh, then you'll have a good life and a long life. I wonder how many lives have been cut short uh, because of their the way they treated their mom and dad. I wonder. I wonder about that stuff. So, listen, I, there's two things that I want here, and I want these for you, that it may be well with thee. There's a lot of people living lives that are just dreadfully uh, filled with drama and got a lot of problems and stuff like that, that it may be well with thee. Do you want that? I hope you want that because I want that for you. And that thou mayest live long on the earth. Um boy. <laughs> I, I want to have a good life. I want to have a long life. And one of the ways that you can do that, the Bible says, is by honoring your mom and dad in the Lord because it's right. And I want to emphasize that again. Your parents are not always right, but it is always right to honor your parents. Your parents are not always right, but it is always right to honor your parents. And whatever this girl did, I mean, this is degeneracy to a degree that scares me. We'll let her talk some more here. I mean, whoa. This is... The dead, please remember that you disrespected and disregarded the lives and deaths of entire communities of people with your ideology. You told me to never back down, so I won't. You know for a fact that even against you, I'm not afraid to share my peace. You are everything I aspire not to be. And I refuse to stand up here and sing the praises of a man who is the paradigm of white supremacy. So I'll take your racist mindset, I'll take your money, and I'll take your advice. And I swear to God I will make this world a better place, not at all because of you, but in exact opposition to you. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Guys, there's a generation coming up that scares me. Let me show you the, the, the word cursed in the Bible, if I can. And when the Bible uses the word cursed, there is a lot of heavy implications there. It says here, Second Peter 2.14, Having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart that have they, ex- have they exercised covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and gone astray. Boy, uh, cursed children. That's what this girl is. She's a cursed child. And uh, the only answer is not a political candidate because these political candidates can't do much about this. The only answer is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've got to preach it. We've got to get the gospel out there. Hope this video was a blessing to you. God bless you, friends. Subscribe if you're new. And uh, if you're watching this video and there's the subscribe button, the subscribe button below you is not pushed, please push that. We'd, we'd thank you for that. And uh, make sure you're subscribed. Some people watch our stuff all the time and they're not subscribed. And so we want to encourage you to do that so you can get up on the updates that we have, things like that. And uh, go ahead and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. God bless you, friend. And we will see you next time. Have a good day.